uh, I agreed with what Rod said. God, if you want to break in at any point, we give you permission. <laughs> I was uh, thinking a lot this week and um, doing a lot of uh, reflecting and um, just speaking with the Lord on a just a different level than I've like had to go to before. Um, and I was thinking about this message this week. And I don't like to try to write my messages too uh, too far in advance because what was happening last week probably isn't what's like flowing this week. I like because I want a now word. I want a now word for what God's saying right now. Um, but on on the way here, um, I was I was speaking to God and I was just like I don't know, and I just don't know. And just because I'm coming up with things, you know, and God's speaking to me, and I'm like, no, that's not, you know, is that me, you know? Um, cause I don't want to ever want to preach out of my emotions. Like that's just not something that's ever a right thing to do. Um, but he was saying, um, today we'll take surrender, <laughs> which about laid me down over here when I just kept hearing Brittany just saying, I will surrender to you, I surrender to you, I surrender to you, surrender to you. That's just like, so absolutely crazy how God can work like that. Where he was just like, if you want me to move, you have to surrender, and it was uh, it was really cool too because um, I was I was praying, and my brother was praying for me, and um, God just said, "Your job today is to set the tender, like to set the logs, set the wood." Um, so this will be a kind of a different message. I'm not gonna. Uh, I looked at my messages. I ended up preaching for like an hour and eight minutes. So um, this will be a, a shorter one. But service might not necessarily be as short because what I want to do um, today um, is is minister to the Lord and have him minister to us. And I want to do it um, corporately, you know, like we do worship here. Um, but towards the end of my message, I want to do um, something a little different. So my, this message probably won't look like the rest of them. Maybe it will. So surrender this time to Jesus. God, we just worship you. We love you. And we just we just say that we surrender this time to you. It's not about who's up on stage on the pulpit. It's not about how we feel about our week this week. God, we just we just swipe that away right now. And me personally, I just say I just I surrender this time to you. I surrender my thoughts to you. I surrender my my worship to you, my praise, my adoration, my everything, Jesus. I just say that this room is yours, and I thank you for letting me get to stand in it with you in your presence and minister to you. Jesus, I ask you just to break through. I just break anything hindering this service right now in Jesus' name. I just declare that you have to go now in Jesus' name. You cannot be here. We have been given the authority By Jesus Christ, you have to go now in Jesus' name. I will not have anything hindering this service, any demonic presence. You have to leave now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and rest upon the people in this room right now and listening to this message. I just ask you to speak to their hearts. I ask you to speak deeper and more clear than you've ever spoken, Jesus. I thank you that you are moving and you are in our midst. Because when you walk into the room, everything changes. And I thank you that you're here now. I just feel your presence. I just ask for an increase in your presence, God. I just pray that if anybody has like any like fog in their brain where they're having a hard time, this guy is talking about Jesus. He's this it feels like he's working it up, but I just don't feel anything. I just break that right now and I just ask you, God, to just seep in and break in and let him feel your presence. It's all about you, Jesus. There's nobody else. It's only about you. We just show up now to speak about you. We adore you and we worship you. There's nobody like you anywhere. There's nobody above you. There's nobody beside you. You are matchless in every way. Darling of heaven, King crucified. Jesus, worship. We adore you, King. God. So I had a I had a week. Sorry. Amen. <laughs> so I had a week. Not a hard week, not a long week, but just a week. Um And I just felt like, you know, it was just it was just a week and then I felt like I was just being um attacked by just 
work, family, anything, you name it. It just felt like uh, everybody was against Jesse, you know, like one of those times where you just feel like no matter what you do, even though you feel like you're doing the right thing, you're just getting beat up. It's just not fun at all. Um, but then I was uh, remembering a worship song, um, and I remembered that I am, I am who he says I am. Yep. I'm not whoever everybody else says I am, because everybody else has their own opinion. But the only opinion that matters to me is his. And if I'm loving him and I'm loving them, then their opinion really shouldn't matter, because only his does. And I also remembered that I'm, I'm seated in heavenly places. And I'm undefeated because he's undefeated and he fights my battles. If somebody wants to break me down or break you down, who's in charge? Who's got you? Who's there? I just know that I'm in heavenly places and I'm undefeated because he is my champion. Giants fall when he stands, right? And then when I open up my mouth, miracles come out. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. So this is the the champion song. And um I was just like going, you know when you're going through it, you can you can say this and you can say that, but then I, I remembered that if I'm if I'm seated in heavenly places and I'm undefeated, what do I have to talk about, you know? Because when I open my mouth, I want miracles to come out. I don't want me to talk bad about somebody. I don't want me to uh, stir up strife or anything like that. I want to open my mouth and I want miracles to come out because I have been given the authority by Jesus. I just love it. And God was just ministering to me um, just through worship songs. And like I, like you guys know me, like when I drive, I don't listen to worship music or anything like that. And like, you'll rarely find me pull out my phone and I'll have a worship song playing. Um, but this week was different and God was kind of molding me and pushing me and um, saying, hey, I want to speak with you in a different way than you're used to. And that's when I just started. And this is funny because this is probably normal to most people. They just like worship, worship music, worship music, worship music, and God ministers to them. But it's just a little different than me because I have a hard time focusing. And then in Psalms uh, 13, 5 through 6, it says, But I trust in your unfailing love, and I will rejoice because you have rescued me, and I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. So then I just remembered, I must trust in God's unfailing love. His, this is so cool, his unfailing love, the love that does not fail. And he has that for me. And then if I'm going through anything, I, I have to rejoice because if I'm undefeated, he's rescued me, right? I will rejoice because you have rescued me, and I will sing to the Lord because he's good. So on the on the whole music thing this week, there was kind of like a, a pattern in my life, and I see you, Jesus. I love it. I love what you're doing. Um, but you know, like on Spotify or whether Spotify, Pandora and Apple music, I'm assuming a majority of these people are Apple music. No, Spotify, Pandora, where are we at? I'm a Pandora guy, probably cause I have an Android. I don't know if that makes a difference, If I had a, my Apple phone's a work phone, but I'd probably be on Apple music if that was the case. But on Spotify, they give you, um, like at the end of the year, they tell you, this is how many hours that you have listened to Spotify. Like this is how many hours that you have um, listened to music. And that got me to thinking um, at the, if that's just music, right? And then like, say you're listening to worship music and that's like a, like a good thing because you're, you're ministering to God and he's ministering back to you. But like at the end of your life, what or even right now what if we could see the amount of time we spend doing stuff so i know how like yeah and if the spotify thing is crazy try opening up your phones and looking at your screen time <laughs> you know what i mean i don't want to do that so what do we what do we spend our time doing i wonder like when we get to heaven if if it'll be the it'll be the same thing you know Hey, Jesse, how many hours did you spend with Jesus? How many hours did you spend, 
on your knees praying for your enemies? How many times did you intercede for the nations? How many times, how many hours did you spend reading your Bible? How many t- how many hours did you spend being a dad? You know, because there's there's all these things that we have 24 hours in a day, and how are we spending them? And then I bet if you look at your phone screen time, you can see about how you're spending them. So it's like, um, along that note too, if, um, like say you're going to heaven and there's a gate there, and there's a guy there and he says, why should I let you in? What have you done to deserve to enter these gates? Think about it. If a guy asks you that question in your head, what would you be saying to justify that you get to enter into kingdom? And I was I was I was asked this question, and I was thinking about it, and um, a lot of I words came up because I love Jesus, because um, I obey Him, um, because I this and I that. But really, the first thing that should come out of your mouth is because He. And that just floored me when I heard this because He, because of Him, I get to be, <laughs> I get to be undefeated, I get to be loved, I get to be cherished, I get to be held. I get to enter enter into his presence because he made this sacrifice for me. I love that. Why do you deserve to come in here? Because he gave his life for me. So I was kind of like um, reading up on like the judgment seat of Christ too. Um, my friends in uh, Holden, uh, Jason and Tiffany, they are going through like the judgment seat of Christ and stuff like that. So in our conversation, that's kind of like the topic of conversation. And my pastor in South Dakota, um, Jeff Mann at James River, he um, is an expert, I would say, but this is like a an area that I heard a lot about um, growing up in leadership with him. Um and when you get to that point, um, like on the judgment seat, it's not going to be, um, it isn't going to be a time to go over your sins um, because those have been forgiven, right? This is the time to go over how you spent your time. What did you do with your resources? What did you do with your opportunities? And there's a there's a book currently being written about your life. And if we could if we could see that book and and how close it is to the end, <laughs> I think we'd start making a little bit different decisions. And this got me to really you know because I could have I could have spent this week doing a lot of things, but God just uh, basically looked at me and He says, "Do you want to go deeper? How do you?" How do you say no to something like that? So when when the enemy's attacking you, you need to react in the opposite spirit that you're like feeling like that, like anger or um, wanting to talk bad about somebody or something or a situation. And when this happens, God says, you have an opportunity here. And he was saying, remember, remember what you've been taught. Remember your training. Remember what I've what I've brought you through and what you're going through. And this is like for everybody. What has God taught you when, you know, like you've heard say, um, when you have a battle, you get on your knees and he already comes back with the head of your enemy. Like, do you honestly believe that or not when trouble comes up? And when I start to feel anxiety come up, I just need to keep telling myself, he's the king. I'm in heavenly places. He already has the head. He's already good. But then why doesn't it feel that way sometimes when you're, when you're declaring it? And that's a chance for you to... Just keep praying, keep worshiping, keep keep looking at his face, keep doing it. Because if you're noticing that there's something not right and you want to you want to go into the opposite spirit and go after him, I think I've said this before, but you have like in a realistics, you have like two puppies, like one on each side, and um, one's a spirit puppy and one's a flesh puppy. 
and depending on which one you feed the most is going to be which one rules in a, in a trial or a situation. So if you're always feeding, feeding your flesh puppy, then that flesh puppy is going to destroy the spirit puppy when it comes time to make a decision. So when you have a chance to um, represent Jesus or act out of fear or anger, which, which one do you feed? Which, which puppy's bigger? Because I want my spirit puppy to be like, I want this one to just even just be like a, I don't even know, a, st- a stillborn puppy or something. Like, I don't even want it to have be developed. I want this my spirit puppy just to devour it and eat it so it doesn't get an opportunity to uh, bring up filth. So like if you could, so back to the book that's being written about your life, if you could see at what stage this book is at, you would start making uh, different decisions. I think I already said that. And it was um, super fun too, because, you know, my wife could tell I was going through a hard time and stuff and we were talking a little bit. And what was really crazy is, is my wife's week was, was very 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 different from my week which i thought was like super cool because she was just encouraging me in the lord um she's just i'll share a testimony of of how she uh spurs me on um she was on a facebook group and there was a a guy in there that basically said um something they it was like a health group or something i don't remember exactly the details but he was going through um the doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with him. He just just had all these like medical issues, and he was basically looking for information on the site. Like, is anybody going through this? Can anybody give me insight and all this stuff? And um, Cindy was telling me this story, and I was just like, ah, okay, where's this going? And she was like, so I messaged him, and I'm like, okay. And then she was like, because God really placed it on her heart to to even though she didn't know what the problem was or anything she just wanted to message him and say hey i'm praying for you (laughs) do you know who jesus is Do you know that he loves you Do you know that he cares about you and that do you know that he's bigger than what you're going through right now and what was really cool is this guy responded and he was basically just blown away that somebody would take the time to message him and what was even more crazy is that he was just, and this happens so many times, when somebody is just crying out to God, are you real? <laughs> if you're real, then send somebody my way. Have somebody speak to me. Do anything. Be real. Say something. And that sometimes comes in the form of a Facebook message from somebody in Missouri. That's my wife. So this guy was just really impacted and was telling my wife that, um, this is exactly what he was telling God. Like, are you real? Do you love me? Do you even care about me? I have this sickness and nobody can even tell me what it is. Like, what's going on? So that really, really encouraged me and um, really just made me go for it, really. Like, if if you're having a tough week, go out and love somebody. Go out and give somebody a hug. Go, go out there and tell them, I care about you. How are you doing? Are you doing good? How's your heart? You guys hear that from me probably quite often. So when I'm feeling really down, I like to, it's really funny, but I like to read the songs, the Song of Songs. And in the Song of Songs, it says, You are my private garden, my treasure, my bride, a secluded spring, a hidden fountain. Song of Songs 412. And then I just <laughs> I just basically just let God say that over me again and again and again and again. He said, Jesse, you are my private garden. Jesse, you are my treasure. Jesse, you are my bride. A secluded spring, a hidden fountain. And I take that a step further and I say, Church at the Rock, you are my private garden. In this in this atmosphere that we have here in this room, I just I view it as a private garden for the Lord that He can walk in, and you guys, your praise is a fragrance to Him. And when we're worshiping Him, I just feel like He's walking up and down, and He's like, He's like, yes. <laughs> he was like, oh, He's like, he, he knows He knows your fragrance when you worship Him. You make a joyful noise for Him. 
And he says, that's so cool. I declare that Church of the Rock is God's private garden. Church of the Rock, you are my treasure. When he talks about you, he's like, hey, there's this church, and it's in Harrisonville. It's Church of the Rock. You won't believe it. They got servant leadership. It's just, I mean, they come in here, and they love me, and they worship me. You should hear some of the things they say about me. <laughs> Most importantly, Church of the Rock, you are Jesus' bride. Can you imagine a secluded spring that God just wants to steal away to? That's beautiful. I want to steal away to a secluded spring and just speak with him. And that's the way he views us. This is a secluded spring. You are my private garden, my treasure, and my secluded spring off to the side where I can where I can sit there and I can put my feet in the water and I can just laugh with you and be with you and talk with you. And the hidden fountain. So, I want to go now into um, the other portion. I know that was fast. I don't know if that was rambling, but that was just what was on my heart. And um, if we don't wake up every morning, and I don't know if I'm I'm displaying this correctly because sometimes I sound aggressive, but... Love must conquer all things, everything, 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 everything. You're in a tough situation. How can I love this situation? You're in a tough spot. You need to look at where that road ends and say, how can we get to this point? How can we love to this point? So this week I've been asking God to reveal New levels of love. New levels of love he has for me. New love of levels I have for my family. New levels of love for my friends. Just new levels of love for everything. Because there's more. The greatest of these is love. So what I want to do during this next portion... um, is I really just want to adore Jesus. And I want to make room for him to move. So this will be um, a time of adoration uh, for Jesus. You know, I could stand up here and I could pray and I could say and I could give a message, but I think what the Lord wants right now is for us to minister to him. So we're going to go, we're going to play... A worship song that has just been swelling in my heart, like, over and over and over and over again. And I just feel like God was like, I don't know, he was like, during your message, he was like, I need you to stop, and I need you to be done, and I need you to play this song and make room for me. So I don't know what that looks like, um, but during this time, I just ask you to just clear your thoughts, clear clear your week, clear your troubles, clear your everything, because right now, during this time, we're going to specifically adore Jesus, you know, I worship you, you're my king, my lover, you're my friend, you know, and if you don't know and haven't just given Jesus strictly adoration, just listen to the song and repeat it, (laughs) because this is a kind of a, it's so good, it's the um, I love you Lord song. And I'm going to pray, and then um, we're going to see what happens. You know, are you going to, I have a feeling somebody's going to see something, and we're going to bounce off, and God's going to move, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're not going to put an agenda on this. If you have to leave, by all means, goodbye. I love you. Thank you for coming. Um, But I think we're just going to um, open up this atmosphere to just worship Jesus. And I know we had worship, but this is going to be, more of the same extended and it's going to be a deep beautiful meaningful time with jesus do you guys want a time like that then you can have a time like that all right so whether you whether whether that one thing whether whether you think you can or you can't you're right okay so if you're if you're desiring for god to speak to you and for him to move on your heart now's the time okay if you have never if, if you've never accepted jesus before and like i said there's there's a time coming when there's there's going to be there's going to be the real deal. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, this man that I'm passionately 
in love with Jesus. If you don't know him, please, I will tell you, anybody will tell you about him and lead you there, okay? So I'm going to pray. So, Father, we just worship you. We just say we surrender this time right now for you. Only you, nothing else will ever do. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you too. God, I just ask you to speak, 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 speak to our hearts. And I ask you to take joy, my king, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. We just declare that this worship is for you and only you. We worship and we adore you, King. And if you need prayer for anything, don't be afraid.